From the IHLS studios in Tel Aviv, this is Homeland Security Weekly Report. Welcome to the Homeland Security Weekly Report. The Hamas in Gaza has purchased an unknown number of quadcopters and it's using them to gather intelligence on Israeli operations across the borderline. Israeli sources told IHLS that the quadcopters are from the type available on the civil market and were probably smuggled into Gaza through tunnels across the border with Egypt. The sources added that it can be assumed that the small unmanned craft do not have a data link to send images to the ground. Experts concluded that this is very basic in terms of surveillance, but the fact that these have been brought into Gaza shows the direction in which the terror organization goes. Glendon Scott Crawford, a 49-year-old U.S. citizen and a former employee of General Electric, was indicted recently on charges of attempting to produce a futuristic weapon of mass destruction. Crawford designed a weapon based on X-ray technology that could, according to FBI investigators, cause substantial injury. He then tried repeatedly to sell the weapon to hate groups such as the KKK for use against minorities. The man who was eventually arrested by the FBI after both Klan and Jewish groups reported him to the authorities. Prosecutors with the U.S. Attorney's Office have recently asked judges to issue an order that would limit access to the weapon's technical details. The trial is set to begin April 29th. The Pentagon sent a bluefin unmanned submarine to Australia to join the search for the flight recorders of the Malaysian flight MH370. The underwater robot is equipped with a sonar and is capable of reaching depth of 4,500 meters, remaining active for up to 24 hours at a time. The unmanned submarine is 5 meters long and weighs 800 kilograms. The flight recorders transmit low-frequency acoustic information that can be detected from a range of up to 10-15 kilometers. The batteries of these devices can last up to 30 days. The Pentagon has made it clear that the submarine will be effective only if the search area is clearly defined. The Beersheva Cyber Center project, currently taking shape in the Israeli Knesset cyber lobby, is expected to include significant benefits for cyber companies who choose to establish branches and RD centers in the southern Israeli city. The proposed benefit package includes government funding for salaries and employee training, in addition to extensive tax benefits on all levels. Knesset member Arel Margalit, chairman of the Knesset Cyber Lobby, said that they've already provided several companies such as Ness, EMC and Deutsche Telekom with benefit packages which include funding for 40% of employee salaries. Margalit added that Israel is a global leader in the cyber arena and the world's new challenges are becoming Israel's opportunity to shine. Thank you for watching our weekly report. See you at the same time, same place next week. And for further information, click the link below.